All right, how's everybody doing? Perfect. All right, well, our next speaker is going to razzle-dazzle and amaze you guys. He's going to wow you guys. You're going to have no idea what's going to be happening. I know you have a full seat, but you're only going to need the edge. So if I get a nice big round of applause for Nick Scott. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be kind of hard to follow that one up, but uh, still, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm Nick, um, uh, and this is going to be about the Nagios Network Analyzer, and it's also going to be about the Nagios SNMP trap interface, both of which are like newish, newer projects. Uh, the Nagios Network Analyzer is going to be a new one. It's going to be geared more towards enterprise. It's not, it's not open source, um, but I'm still going to talk about it, show you what it can do. Um, I'll talk about um, NetFlow a little bit. If you guys don't aren't familiar with NetFlow, we'll just kind of get everybody on the same page there. Um, and then I'll talk about the features and, and all the good stuff about NSTI as well. So we're going to start out with Nagiosa Network Analyzer, and then we'll just go from there. Um, so let's see. Yes, that's right. I do have slides. I should probably be sticking to those. Um, so let's just jump into it here. Um, Nagios Network Analyzer is built to analyze like NetFlows. Um, and is there anybody here who is currently using NetFlow in their environment? Um, so you, you, you can speak to how, how good and useful and how much better of a picture that you get when you are using NetFlow. Um, one of the bad things about NetFlow is that uh, it's so much data. Like um, I'm going to talk about what actual like the data it is, but you just get buried in the data. And that's kind of one of the biggest problems. Um, but NetFlow is, um, let's see, it was it started, Cisco, Cisco started the whole NetFlow thing like back in like the 90s, I think like 1990 to be exact. Um, and what it does is it starts tracking like actual sessions of what's happening. That, that, that's not a very good explanation. Like every time there's a connection that's got all of these, uh, these things in common, like you have some connection that's on the same interface of a router that's starting at this IP and going to this IP um, using a certain IP protocol that's um, starting at this port and going to this destination port. NetFlow um, just rolls that all together, and that's what's considered a flow to NetFlow. Now, that's fungible, and there's some people who might argue that there's, like, there's a little more to it than that, but when you get down to the base, base of it, that's what Cisco started calling a NetFlow, and that's just kind of like where it, where it kept going afterwards. So what does that all mean? Well, we'll get into what, what, what that means. I'm just bringing, bringing up to speed on some, some terminology of like what, what, what an actual flow is. Um, let's see here. So like what actually can define these flows or what can send these flows? Um, uh, traditionally, it was a router um, that defined these flows and then exported these flows to some, some NetFlow collector. Um, but, but nowadays, there's, switch, the, there's switches that do have NetFlow capability. So um, you, can, you can use that to export NetFlow data. Um, there is software that you, so you can install some sort of like a F probe is what I commonly use um, on like a server of yours to actually get the NetFlow style data from that server. Um, and that actually exports to a central like NetFlow analyzer, and that's the role that Network Analyzer is looking looking to fill. Um, so that's kind of the the anatomy of how you get NetFlow built into your network. Um, and and basically what uh, um, what these do, like as the router is routing all of the um, all, all of the packets that are coming through, it's composing these flows and it's storing them in its cache. And what's and w what it traditionally does is it is it comes into the router and then it disseminates that information, collects it, and then as soon as as the cache on this router fills up, it sends it out to a, to the actual uh, network analyzer. Um, so it. Y you can have it dump its cache so that you can get like pretty much like synchronous data as it's going through through the router instead of saying to have to fill the uh, router up. But that's um, as far as I know, that's not a general use case. Um, and then as far as, w as what this does is this um, uh, so something like this, where something like F probe where you, that you'd install on your server to actually garner NetFlow data. Um, it just actually puts the NIC in promiscuous mode, and then um, that's kind of how it. It just looks at everything on the uh, actual collision domain of, of the NIC and then exports that as well. 
Um, there's, um, there's a couple different types of NetFlow. Um, Nagios Network Analyzer supports all of them. Uh, there's, there's NetFlow version 5, 7, and 9. Um, primary differences are, I believe, 5 only supports IPv4. Um, same with 7. Um, version 9 supports IPv6. Um, Nagios Network Analyzer supports version 9. There's IP, IP, IP fix, which is version 10, um, which is also supported by Network Analyzer. And then um, there's the actual other, other brands of, of NetFlow, like JFlow, which I do believe, I have not tested this, I don't have a Juniper router to use or to test with, but I do believe that that is uh, pretty much a, just a bit for bit copy of NetFlow. Um, if, if, if anybody knows differently, please speak to me after this talk, because then we'll need to talk. Um, and then th there's also something called S-Flow, which is actually really popular, and it is actually really cool. Um, S-Flow, as far as I know, stands for sampled flow. Um, and while NetFlow generally like, grabs every single packet and like, does, its, does its NetFlow analyzation to, to see where the, like, the source port, destination port, destination IP, source IP, all that stuff, and stores it, S-Flow just samples packets. So in much higher volume networks, um, NetFlow can become, uh, you just have so much data and it's filling up so fast, but if you just kinda wanna get a sample, like you wanna get every 500th packet, obviously you're not getting the same resolution of what a, what's actually happening on your network, but odds are you're gonna get like a similar picture. It just won't be, it'll just be like a 500th of the, of the resolution, if that analogy works. Um, all right, so uh, what are some common use cases of NetFlow? Like, so the, now that we kind of know what NetFlow is and like what it does, it pertains to networks, I guess, is what we've established. Um, some, common, some common use cases are bandwidth usage. Because like currently, w when you're looking at bandwidth and you're l looking to see uh, what's using up all the bandwidth, um, if, if you're not using NetFlow, pretty much the best thing you can do is you just look at the router and then you know what that's connected to. And then, or you look at the, like the, the SNMP pollings on a switch of like in and out bandwidth, and you know what's hooked up to the switch. So you know that something hooked up to that switch is using a lot of bandwidth, bandwidth but you really have no idea beyond that. You can go and, you can go and look at the, like the server that it's hooked up to, or you can be like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that, that's marketing or something. I, I, I don't know how, how else you would do it. But um, NetFlow actually really just completely fixes that, that, that problem. You can, you can see bandwidth with like per port, and by that I mean you can see how much bandwidth is flowing through port 80 on like going to a certain IP or from a certain IP, um, IP or subnet. Um, it's you can, can you can control it that way as well, um, like w where it's going and like any combination of the above, which which we'll get into later. Um, I, d I don't have a live demo of Network Analyzer just because of the implicit environment that is almost required to have some sort of network analyzer, like a NetFlow analyzer, because you have to have so many things that are sending it data for it to actually be interesting or useful. Um, uh, and then so some other common use cases are kind of an extension of the, of the bandwidth usage would be like a barren activity. Um, and up here I've got like watch for known worm virus activity. Which is actually kind of a funny story. When I first um, was first starting to get into the NetFlow, Ethan was like, "Just go figure out and just try and try and figure out wh whatever you can about this." Um, I got I, I got a I got a NetFlow collector working, and then I looked at the bandwidth, and there was a lot of bandwidth coming. Um, I can't remember what port it was, but it was a it was a port that was a known uh, Trojan port. I was like, oh, Ethan, um, I think, and we had just hired a new guy, uh, Scott, Scott Wilkerson, and uh, I, think, I think Scott's got a virus, so, um, and we were like, oh, oh, crap, and so we had him run all of this antivirus uh, stuff, and it just turned out that it would, he had, was using a strange port for Dropbox, so um, kind of felt silly after that, but anyways, um, it, it, it was, it did still kind of, uh, show the, like, oh, hey, look, it might be a virus, but it wasn't a virus, so. Um. So, uh, the actual challenges of NetFlow is that you get a lot of data, and it's very easy to get buried, and sometimes people will say the only thing worse than no data is too much data. Um, I don't even know what too much data means, but I can certainly understand the feeling that too much data is a bad thing if you don't know how to go through it properly. Um, you also need a good way to drill down through all the data, which um, kind of goes hand in hand with the easy to get buried. 